Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Hathaday, everybody, and good morning. I'm Jason Salas, and as always, we thank you for starting your day the KUAM way. This is Crime Time, the show that we bring you each and every Wednesday where we profile various members of law enforcement. And today, we want you to watch, we want you to share this post, and we want you to take notes because we are in the Mangilao Community Center right in the central part of the island, almost the center point of our great island, 30 miles long by 7 miles wide. And we are here today because there was perhaps the most heinous of crimes, the crime of murder was committed last December. GPD continues to look into this crime. Leads are being accepted, but the family of Juan Uggen still looking for answers. Um, and we want to know what you can do to help. And I'm joined right now by two friends of mine, Sergeant Paul Tapao with uh, GPD. Sarge, as always, we thank you. Hey, Hafidi. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, I, I, I really, um, moving in with this crime segment and everything on Crime Time, I, you know, I, I, I saw it fitting that we actually reach out to the mayor of Mingilao mm -hmm. Uh, to discuss the efforts and how we all can help as a community in bringing closure to this case. And just to recap, uh, you know, the incident of what had happened on December 11th, shortly before 3, three in the morning, um, our officers from the Aganya Precinct Command responded to a shooting incident that occurred in Pangolina Street off of uh, Creton Torres Street in, in Mingilao. Now, a 41-year-old uh, Juan Uggen was uh, transported to Guam, uh, Naval Hospital Guam, where he was later pronounced deceased. Now, an autopsy, uh, an autopsy was performed by the chief medical examiner where we had moved the investigation now uh, based on the causation, uh, the causation of the, the cause of death was ruled uh, by manner of shooting and of course the manner of death is ruled as a homicide. Mm -hmm. Now since the uh, initial call outs of our detectives, we have been working very diligently on this case. This has been our priority case since December 11th mm -hmm. and our detectives continue to work and now you know, we're, we're reaching out to the community and we're asking the community for their assistance to provide any leads or any information that can aid our investigators with this case. And, you know, um, what better way to explain the surrounding areas of uh, Pangolina Street than, than their respective uh, village leader, which is, uh, you know, Marin Gauta, who understands that these are pillar families, probably two, three, maybe even five generations that resided in the area. and. Mm -hmm. You know, to hear of this incident to happen in such a really tight-knit community, it really brings, you know, um, a, a great deal of concern, not just to the community, but to the entire island of Guam. So, you know, this, this is a great opportunity where we as Guamanians can actually help the family in bringing closure to this case. All right, absolutely, Sergeant. Of course, we know Mingila is a very, very large village. It's a village with a lot of history, obviously. It's very, very proud, and probably no resident in Mingila is more proud to be part of that than the man who wears Mingila literally on his chest right now, the Mayor, uh, Mayor Alan Ngakta. Mayor, thank you so much for having us and giving us some of your time this morning. Thank you, Jay. And uh, once again, thank you, uh, Officer Tapao and uh, GPD. And of course, you guys trying to come out here collaboratively and getting all the efforts and resources together to try, uh, try to help out the community, the family, mm -hmm. especially in, uh, in, in this kind of instance where something like this is very uh, surprising and not, not regularly, it, nobody wants any kind of uh, incident to occur in their, within their community or an island like this, and especially not knowing what's going on in, uh, on, in each side. And the com communication is very uh, overwhelming and uh, I appreciate it again for them coming out. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the facts about the case, Sarge, at least what we know at this point. Um, speculation is indicated from when we first ran that story on December 11th that um, somebody believes they may have heard maybe a scooter or a moped um, around the area of where the shooting was right outside Mr. Uggen's house. Juan Uggen right outside his home, you know, the, the place where you're supposed to feel the most safe in his own village. Um, it may have been a scooter, like I said, or, or a moped or anything like that. Um, you're accepting those um, those those types of reports right now anything is evidence anything can help with the investigation as you always remind us that's that's the tip information that's the uh, the forefront and what we're trying to get is really anybody that may have heard or seen something and uh, you know identifying a scooter or a moped as, as a possible uh, vehicle that may have left the area um, when the the uh, respective neighbors heard the shot or you know and came to provide assistance these time frames were actually taken to the preliminary stage of the investigation by our detectives. And of, of course, you know, knowing that the street in itself and Pangolina Street, and that's a, that's a one way in, one way out, and you're going to have to exit towards uh, uh, Corten Torres and then e exit into the main thoroughfare of Route 10. You know, this this is where, it, it, if it was, you know, um, the, the, the vehicle of interest is a scooter, then we kind of, as a community, if, if you saw that, 
at that particular time between the hours of two or three o'clock in the morning to please you know, uh, assist our investigators by submitting a tip online to the Guam Crime Stoppers website or by calling, you know, but these are things in which things are the un, un, uh, out of the ordinary, things that may seem out of place. These are the tip information that we look for. Mm -hmm. These are the things that may actually help us, you know, really like with what we've been saying and stressing uh, through prior interviews, it's really piecing the puzzle and getting that one critical piece, that one critical element to piece that puzzle and paints the picture for our detectives and of course it paints a better picture of where we're going to be moving forward with this investigation. And we're a month into the investigation now and I know the detectives are really staying diligent with that but um, you know as the weeks and you know days become weeks and, and time rolls on and everything like that does it get harder and harder to do this type of investigative work as more time passes which is why we're calling on the community to please come forward as soon as you can? It does it does to some degree but uh, you know again um, the, the response time from, from our, our police officers and the ability to gather information, you know, such as the, uh, uh, the possible vehicle or the possible scooter that, that, that's out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, 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 it's just compiling and, of course, to time and everything, going back and re-interviewing and going back into the, uh, the case file, that's where the tedious task comes in. They may, you know, they're going to go back and they're going to review their notes. They're going to go back, check, recheck, and verify. And that's the tedious task of investigation. And, you know, it really, it's the, the, the patience that we ask of the community when we deal with these cases. Some cases may take a matter of months, ma matter of years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it, 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 it really is uh, getting the right information to bring that, the, the, the right perpetrator to, uh, to justice and, of course, bringing the family and, of course, closing the case for them. So the length of time in, in, into an investigation can span from days weeks, months, even years. So, you know, our, our detectives continue to work that and, and you know, it's it's really putting everything into perspective and in how we're going to actually present it and to seek the prosecution so that we can actually bring closure to this case. All right, very well. If you are just joining us, this is Crime Time. We come to you each and every Wednesday where we profile various aspects of law enforcement and today we are asking for your help where we can help hopefully bring closure and bring some more information so that GPD can continue their investigation into what has been classified as a homicide of uh, Juan Uggen who is a resident of Manila and I want to bring Mr. Um, Mayor Alan Ngakta into this again and uh, Mr. Mayor you know with respect to all of the families and so many of them scores of families that have lived in Manila for generations deep two families that I know that really have roots in this wonderful village are of course the Munya family you know we're literally yes. Yes. We're just, you know, 100 yards away from, you know, uh, Bill Munya and the great work that he's done with sports. Yes. Uh, but also the Uggen family, you know, Mr. Uggen's family. Yes. Um, you know, the Uggen is a huge presence in Mingila. So yes. did you did you know Juan Uggen himself? And, and what can you say about, like, yes. the, the family? Well, good good family. Like I said, the, netted, the, the family, close-knitted area. Like uh, uh, Officer Tapao said earlier, you know, that, that area is, you know, known, it's not known. Very close-knitted, third-generation family staying there. Uh, very heavily involved with sports, good character. So, like I said, I wish uh, information here to try to get uh, things resolved is very crucial. Mm -hmm. And we want to stress that anything can help to try to bring closure to the family would be greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. And for maybe some, um, maybe some people don't know the exact part of Mingila where this, uh, again, the very heinous crime happened where Juan Ogan was shot in front of his own home. Can you describe that part? Because, I mean, we're in the heart of the village right now, so your office is right over there. We've got the baseball field, Santa Teresita yes. Parish is right there, so, you know, there's a lot to do over here. What about that part of Pangolinan Street? Well, that part, you know, if, if you're not too familiar, Sanko Gardens is also there. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's a mechanical garden, right. and it's also, uh, it's also a site for the, the tourists. They come there, they bring some tourists to look at uh, the plants uh, and different various uh, orchids and stuff like that. So it is also a landmark. It's a significant area where there's there's tourists that uh, go there. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, very concerning too uh, for the fact that uh, in that general area, you got a uh, bus stop right next to it. So like I said, heightened concerns. And uh, like I said, I just want to reiterate on uh, what Officer Tapao had mentioned. It's one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that can be of valid information where they can look into trying to get this uh, resolved, we would greatly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And what has your office done? And I mean, what does it mean for you, you know, as the, I would say, as the heartbeat of Mingilao in your role as the mayor and everything, when things like this happen at your municipal level and everything like that, how do you try and, you know, 
allay the concerns of your fellow villagers? Because, you, you, you know, you're not just the leader. You're also one of their neighbors. So what can you do to say our streets are safe? We want to make sure that everybody is OK. You know, we grieve for the loss of, of one of our fellow Guamanians and everything like that. But Mingilao is still a wonderful place to live. Yes. Oh, yes. Mingilao is a wonderful place. It is the, the beautiful. Our island's still beautiful. And it's not going to deter any spirits. This is a very so, scary thing. Of course. And consoling with everyone, the family, of course, getting the message out there. Communications very Paramount is very important. So any ways of sharing and reassuring the neighborhood watch program is it's now is not as it used to when it started developing. So it's grown, mm -hmm. it's getting better. You got more interest. Of course, now we're looking into even vetting people that come into the chats and things like that. Mm -hmm. Vetting everyone, vetting every avenue, making sure that we got we got some kind of positive uh, information going through these channels and, and commu communication in, in terms of all the agencies that are involved, of course. Okay. You know. And before I get back to the Sarge, Mr. Mayor, um, do you guys have like a WhatsApp group that, and if people would like to, to join that, you know, people um, at people on their street in Mingila, maybe yeah. like a neighborhood, even their family's property, how can they do so? Sure. You can also go into uh, on the uh, on Facebook, and we got the Mingila Wa neighborhood watch, and then also the chats, as you know how they work. You got admin, so of course they can communicate with my office here and call us if they're, they're really truly into getting positive results and action and getting involved. We encourage it. Mm -hmm. come, give us, come, call us up so we can communicate with these different areas and pockets in the community where we can ask uh, and, uh, collaboration, getting the efforts in there too. You guys can get into the, uh, the, what, the different WhatsApp channels, mm -hmm. of course. So th th those are in play, and we got like about 10 different areas. You got people popping up. So we want to we wanna encourage them mm -hmm. to be productive, get involved if they can, and uh, do some positive things for the community. You know, okay. Mingila is always, always going to be here. We're resilient. We love beautiful uh, uh, village. We have a beautiful island. And we'll have to do our part. I mean, you is strong, of course. Yes, of course. Okay, so um, Sarge, what else can you add about, you know, seeing as how the mayor is doing all of he can, you know, uh, with the villagers and at, at, the, at the family level and everything. When law enforcement comes in, what, do you, what else do you need? We've talked about, you know, offering information, being on the lookout, you know, joining these WhatsApp groups. But with this particular case, what more can we do? It really is the collaboration between, of course, the Guam Police Department and the community. Um, the efforts with the Neighborhood Watch program, it really... Um, when you go back to the genesis of the Neighborhood Watch program, you know, revitalizing it under a mango tree after 20 years of hiatus, uh, you know, being a part of the municipal planning meeting and coming out and, and just spinning something up, it really, you know, the, the genesis behind it was really keeping it community-centric. And this is where the partnership comes in, is the community-centric is that it's owned and operated by the community. And with this particular case, you know, it really... Um, the beautiful thing about working with uh, the villages such as Mingilao and all the other uh, villages that still have pillar families within their residence or within their, their, their uh, respective municipalities, it, it allows us to really hone in on, 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 the, on the who's who's and what's going on and the, uh, you know, the, the norms within the village. You have the village leaders, but you still have those pillar families that really dictate how the villages are, are, are you know, um, should, should, be, should be operated and everything. The pillar families are the foundation of the village. And, you know, seeing the, the, the families in, uh, within uh, uh, Corten Torres and, of course, Pangalinan Street, uh, like I said, these, the, the pillar families date back three, four generations. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is where we come in because officers who are not from the area may not know the family members, may not know the history. And, you know, this is where we need to, to open up some more or uh, search deeper as to the history of the family and, and finding out, the, you know, how we can actually um, gather that information to help utilize that in our investigation. Because what we're only doing, too, you know, what people don't see is that we try to dig beyond the surface of what happened and what's reported. And really, you know, going back into, into fa understanding the family and, of course, the people that surround Mr. Ogden. You know, it's important for the investigation. And like I said, this is where the pillar families uh, come into play and getting involved for in, in a program that's centric towards the community, it's a beautiful thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it's, um, we've been saying it over and over and it's starting to sound cliche about, you know, getting involved in Neighborhood Watch program, but it is important, it really is. And, you know, any information that we can gather, like I said, you know, we wanna go beyond the surface of what was reported 
and our investigators need to dig deep and, and of course get that information, get the information that um, you know, some family members may be holding back from, maybe friends, relatives that you know, may have to you know, understand that they may have to really open up their heart and bring in closure because these are times where, you know, hey, let's look deep into our soul and our mm -hmm. spirit and find, you know, the, the true information that we need to bring closure to this case. All right. Thanks so much, Charles. But before we go, um, there are a couple of comments right now, which I want to read. Um, the mayor is actually receiving um, some kudos right now. Bill Cruz is saying, good job, Mayor Allen. I appreciate it. And that's what we all want to do in uh, promoting positive vibes. And of course, like I said, you know, uh, Mr. Wan's going to be greatly missed, uh, like with the family's kids. He's a <clears throat> loving father, active uh, he w with sports, like I said, football, uh, baseball. So he's, he's, he's did some, done some positive thing in his life, and we want to just uh, can extend our condolences. Okay, and a member of the Uggen family right now, uh, Sonia Uggen, is saying, our mayor has helped us, and she says, Mayor, thank you very much. And also C.R. Wood is saying, hope. Our friends at GPD can resolve this case and prayers for the family. So we are in Mingila right now. And what we've learned talking to these two gentlemen, just some of many that are very, very concerned about the ongoing case in Mingila with the um, homicide of Juan Uggen is a member of the Mingila family is no longer with us. We want to find out what happened and we need your information to do so. So please contact uh, the Guam Crime Stoppers. What's that uh, number again, Sarge? So we understand the magnitude of this crime. It is a homicide. It's a murder. It's a murder investigation and fear you know, maybe lingering, you know, that, that critical information may be held back because of fear. You know, like I, like I stated before, you know, this is where we need to search into our, into our souls and our spirits. You know, give us that information, that critical information that you may know um, that our detectives may have missed. You know, so submit a tip anonymously online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. If you feel that you don't want to be known that you provided that information, the Crime Stoppers is the avenue in which you can provide that. You know, don't let fear be, uh, or, don't, or don't let fear dictate how you're going to carry out your actions, mm -hmm. because these are good actions in which you can actually bring positive change to this investigation, and of course to bring closure, of course, to the family that's still in mourning of the loss of Mr. Rogan. So, you know, uh, it's guam.crimestoppersweb.com. Um, I guarantee and I promise absolute anonymity. This is where you can provide, and this is where you can provide the assistance of help. And of course, you know, understanding that, you know, searching into your souls and your spirit of what really uh, may have transpired is that information that we need. All right. Well, Sarge, we appreciate it as always. And we, we stand by ready to help you in any way that we can along with the community. And Mr. Mayor, thank you for giving us some of your time and, and welcoming sure. us to Mingila. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. And be safe, everyone, and be vigilant. We're into a new year. Let's all be responsible out there. Okay. Well, sir. For Sergeant Paul Tapao with the Guam Police Department and for Mangila Mayor Alan Ongakta, I'm Jason Salas with KUM Digital. Thanks so much for streaming with us, and please send us your information and do it soon. We'll see you next time.